As a kid, I went to Ira Harbison Elementary in National City, where there were only about three black students, me included. I remember leaving class pretending to go to the bathroom, but really just leaving class to walk around and take down my knocker ball hairstyles, trying to be what I thought was normal by putting water in my hair and wearing it down, just as I had seen every day with the girls in my classroom. At Ira Harbison, not many of the kids looked like me. They were either Mexican or Asian. I remember being at home, putting powder on my already light skin, just to see if I could match my other classmates. Every year, I dreaded Black History Month. In fourth grade, I sat on the cold floor of the school cafeteria with the rest of my class, listening to our white principal talk for hours about black history, as if slavery wasn't as horrific as it really is. We all struggle. All of us get talked about. She was putting on a show and acting as if she knew what it was like to be a slave and could relate to black history. It was enough to make me ball up my fists in anger. Before I knew it, all eyes were on me. The kids instantly spotted me, the only little black girl in their territory. I couldn't bear making eye contact with all those eyes that landed on me. I mean, I was just a kid. My heart began to beat faster and faster. I could feel my armpits sweating and my face turning red. They'll look away, it's okay. It'll be over soon. But in reality, I just wanted to get the hell out of that assembly and disappear. Starting Chula Vista Middle School, I was ready for a new experience. In a new district, I thought the kids would be nicer and things were different. Well, for the most part, I mean. Instead of being in one classroom all day, I did go to six different periods. In PE class, sitting with my classmates in perfectly aligned rows on the black concrete, I even made a good friend, Paulina, a Mexican girl in the same grade as me. We had to walk a mile, and before we started, I approached her, just starting small conversation in hopes that I could make a friend. It was all about cliques in middle school. That's how you know you're popular when you're never alone. I heard this in advisory class and it was like a light bulb just came on. I wanted that. I wanted to be popular. I didn't wanna just be noticed for just being that black girl. If I had a lot of friends and my own little clique, they would notice me for my personality. Amazingly, me and Paulina instantly connected. For the first time, I felt completely comfortable. She never judged me, and it was so easy for me to just be myself around her. In most of my classes, there was always a conversation in Spanish going on. It was so annoying. One day, during PE, I was playing basketball with classmates, a Mexican girl and a black boy. It was slightly misting and chilly, we all just wanted to get PE over with and be back in a warm classroom. The game got intense. Little did I know, things were about to get more intense. A kid walked by. Hey, what's up? Who are you playing with? Uh, just these mayates. The girl laughed. When me and my black classmate asked her what she said, she just kept shooting baskets and acted like it was nothing. Later on that day, I couldn't help but think about what she meant and what was so funny. I knew it was something bad by the evil smirk on her face. At lunch, I asked Paulina what it meant. Her eyes got big and she looked shocked. She didn't know what to say, but I knew she knew what it meant. Plus, I knew she spoke Spanish. I asked her again and she hesitated to tell me. That's when she spit it out. That girl had called me a nigger. I was no stranger to this word, but having it said to me for the first time hurt. I started hating Mexicans, I hated white people, I hated Asians, I hated everybody, and I hated being black. My first two years of middle school felt like a century of torture. Like when I walked into my math class one day and there was a substitute. I found a seat in the back of the class closest to the door and sat down. Class started and it didn't take long before the substitute started teaching mostly in Spanish. He apologized for it as it was just natural for him. I was one amongst two other black students in the class. 
Just teach the class in Spanish. Forget those who don't speak Spanish. I couldn't believe this girl in my class had the nerve to say this, and what pissed me off the most was watching the substitute stand in front of the class debating on whether or not he should. Throwing my books in my backpack, grabbing all my stuff, I got up and walked out the class. I didn't look back. It was my last period anyway, so fuck it. My mom picked me up from school. Luckily for me, she was early. I walked out the school gates, I got in the car, and, dro and she drove off. The day I just had filled me with rage that I had to get off my chest. I told her what I was dealing with and was surprised to find out she was dealing with the same things. Ignore them, baby. I heard her loud and clear, but still, parents just don't understand. After middle school, I spent one year at Chula Vista High School as a freshman, but I transferred and started Lincoln High my sophomore year. I wanted to go to Lincoln so bad. My mom wanted me to go to Lincoln too because she graduated from there. And it was just remodeled, brand new with beautiful palm trees, shiny computers and different programs like the arts, science and engineering, and social justice. I was in the arts program, the smallest out of the three. I was the new girl, the one who everyone noticed. It was scary because I didn't know anyone. Where would I fit in? It was a bit of a culture shock. Sophomore year at Lincoln High, I was excited to be popular. I was finally around other students who looked like me. I wouldn't have to worry about being alone or being put on the spot for my imperfections. I thought I would fit in and have a lot of friends. The first day of school actually felt good. I would hear guys whisper to each other, who's that? She's pretty, and I liked it. I thought these guys were trying to be my friends. They would walk me to class and even offer to walk me home from school. The good times lasted for about a week. I didn't know that the only reason they paid me so much attention was because they wanted something out of me. When I didn't give it to them, that's when the rumors started and the girls would notice me too. In the halls and in the classrooms, who's that light-skinned girl? She thinks she's better than everybody. Is that a weave? I was judged for not being black enough for the very first time. You ain't full black because I had what they would call good hair. One day, a girl, Tanisha, who didn't even know me, passed me by on the stairs and called me a bitch. I just kept walking. This is the first time one of the girls was mean to me. I knew this was going to be the beginning of a nightmare. Fourth period art, my days got brighter when I met my best friend, Shakira. She was quiet and easier to talk to. Neither of us were popular or had a lot of friends. We both loved Tupac Shakur. We'd go to the movies together. We made each other laugh all the time and talked a lot over the phone. We shared our deepest and darkest moments with each other. I had never had a deep friendship like this before. And with her, it felt like we were blood. Because our families knew each other, we had history. Being an only child, she was like a sister to me. She was the only one I'd let make comments about me being skinny. She called me sticks. And it was actually kind of funny, and it didn't offend me because we were so close. I still didn't want to make fun of her, though. She had been at the school before I got there, since she was a freshman, and the kids were mean to her. She would get bullied, and I'd try to stand up for her as much as I could. She was heavyset and taller than me. People even called her precious. There was this girl I knew, Venetia. She didn't like Shakira. What's that smell? She tried to make everyone think Shakira smelled. I told Venetia to leave her alone. Shakira did the same for me too, but not for herself. When kids at school would talk about me in front of her saying I was not a virgin, she had my back. You don't know her, I do. That's my best friend, and she's not like that. She's not like the rest of these girls. We couldn't be with each other every day though, and when Shakira was absent, I felt like a part of me was missing. We had second period together, and when I didn't see her walk through that door, I spent the rest of class trying to figure out who I'd eat lunch with. Where would I go? The safest place I can think of was the bathroom. I knew that if I went to the quad, people would call me a loner, and I was just tired of being talked about. Too much attention became a bad thing, and it wasn't the right kind of attention anyway. 
I walked into the bathroom and made sure no one saw me go into the stall. I sat down on the toilet with the toilet seat down, and I would peek out of the cracks of the door to make sure no one noticed that I was in there eating my lunch, a chicken sandwich with the Gatorade. In the stall by myself, I thought about everything that was going wrong for me. My mom and my dad had officially broken up. My family was falling apart right before my eyes. My mom and I ended up moving, and we got our own place. Just me and her, and I had to cope with my dad being away from me for the first time. At school, there was no one to laugh with except for Shakira. I sat in the stall questioning myself really heavy. Will I ever be good enough for anybody? What is it about me that makes me have to go through all of this? My birthday, junior year, is hard to forget. I spent the whole weekend prior getting the perfect outfit together, a pink cardigan with black tights and flats. In my room, I Googled hairstyles I could wear and set out my makeup. I planned for this day to be perfect. I just wanted to finally have that one day in school where everything went right for me. It was my 17th birthday. That day after lunch, this guy, Tony, and his squad walked by. Everybody liked Tony because he was always making fun of people. I guess you can say he was funny, but not to me. Renice is a big-headed bitch, he said, looking at me, singing it like a song. I was with a few of my friends, and the rage I felt inside was like a fireball piercing from my stomach up to my head in full force, getting ready to explode. Now, I had never felt like killing anyone in my life before, until this day. I was going to slap the shit out of him. <laughs> he wouldn't even be able to pronounce my name again. I felt kind of crazy experiencing these thoughts, but in a weird way, it made me feel good. It felt good because I was no longer afraid to stand up for myself. My friend had to hold me back from getting to Tony. Lucky, luckily for him, he was able to walk away. He would even tell people we made a porno together. He didn't quit until senior year. And then he even had the balls to ask me to prom. And easily, I said no. Senior year, I had my iPod with my headphones in, listening to Tupac, Only God Can Judge Me, with my head held high. At this moment, I had no fear. Growing up, Tupac was always on at the house. My mom and dad would play his music in the car. His lyrics made me feel that it's okay to be alone, even when it seemed as though everyone except me had someone around. My mom and dad both came to graduation separately. I wanted things to be like they were when we were all a family before the split. But at the same time, I was happy they were both there. I had never seen my mom so proud of me. With all that noise, I could hear her yelling my name. It was bittersweet because I still had that little bit of that girl inside of me, that girl in fourth grade that wanted reassurance from others. I wanted the whole crowd cheering for me, even those kids I didn't like. I wanted that thrill. My makeup was done just right. I had my white cap and gown on with my silver heels. I was as confident as I could be. When my principal called my name, that was my calling to my future. She handed me my diploma, and it was like she handed me a million bucks. This was my token to success. And later on, when I threw my cap in the air, it was a relief. For the very first time, my perspective changed. No matter where I am or who I'm around, there will always be someone judging me. Someone will always have something to say about me, good or bad, but what they say is only their opinion, not a fact. Walking away from the crowd with my diploma in hand, I shook it all off. All that bullshit was behind me now. Renisa Jefferson.